Hello, good morning. Welcome to the program Dialogue. The name remains Abdul Aziz Ahmed Kada. You've been here with us since 6 o'clock, and it's been quite interesting. After the headlines from the National Dailies, from some of the National Dailies, <coughs> Aisha was here on the first uh, discussion program, discussion segment, where she talked about substance abuse by women, youth especially, and its effect on the society, with uh, a consultant uh, a consultant doctor uh, there, or quite an eye opener there. Well, let's uh, leave else a bit and let's come to politics. It is dialogue and it is Friday, the last edition of the program for the week, reaching you from the stables of Liberty Television, Voice for All, and Vision for All. Once again, the name remains Abdul Aziz Abe Kader. Well, it's been a lot of front and back between the President and the National Assembly on the amended electoral bill. But eventually, we saw all the gray areas raised by the president uh, attended to by the National Assembly. <coughs> we are waiting to see the president assent to <coughs> that uh, amendment. Will the president assent to it? The National Assembly is already uh, saying if the president refuses to assent to it, they will use their own power to ensure that it becomes uh, a bill, a law at the end of the day. But of course, there are issues concerning that bill. One of those areas is the issue of the window, or would I say ceiling, for electoral spending by uh, politicians from the, from the president, National Assembly members, the governors, and state House of Assembly members, down even to local government. Never mind that local government are non existent, they are in the pocket of the governors. But then a ceiling was put to read, Councillor Chairman and Co. But then, 2019 is fast approaching. We are already in November as it is. So uh, how prepared is INEC as it is? Just uh, this week, the week ended, yes, I think in, on Monday, the national chairman of INEC uh, said, Professor Yakubu said, the issue of budget shouldn't be a problem for them. They will, one way or the other, look for means to actually conduct the election. But then, Voter education is another thing. So this morning, we shall be talking about that among other issues. Hopefully next week, we, sh we will do the best we can to have National Orientation Agency here. Because as it is, INEC alone can't do it. The, the, the CSOs, NGOs, I mean, several other organizations, even political parties, you ask, what are political parties doing to actually uh, take on voter education? And this morning, we have with us the Administrative Secretary of Independent National Electoral Commission, Keduna Office, talking about uh, our Mohammed Mashi. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You're welcome. Thank you. Well, here we are again. I show uh, all eyes are on INEC as it is uh, today. Uh, we saw the electoral uh, bill, three areas, but let's even start from that. The issue of the ceiling on how much a candidate can actually spend. Yeah. Uh, we saw that of the president, uh, Min, uh, I think it was 5 billion naira. Five billion, yeah. yeah. So a lot of governors, 1 billion naira. Exactly. House and uh, senators, 500 million. House of Reps, uh, 250 uh, million. Now, who is supposed to monitor <laughs> these expenses? That's a tough one. Mm. You see, in Nigeria, things like that are actually a little bit difficult to monitor. to monitor. But in reality, the almost lies on the commission to ensure that what should be done is done and done properly. Okay. So essentially, it is the commission that is supposed to be monitoring the expenditures. There is a department, really, the election, uh, the EPM, we call it the Election Party Management Department. Okay. They are solely responsible for monitoring every aspect, every activity of uh, politicians party. and political parties. Okay. So the onus lies on the commission to do that. To do that. Yeah. Oh, I said the onus lies on the commission because now we're looking at our president spending maximum five billion. Because there is the issue also of uh, how much an individual can donate. An exactly. individual or corporate body is not expected to donate more than a ten million naira that is it. Uh, to a candidate. Yeah. Uh, now, <coughs> I mean, it's 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 actually a big one there. People will want to see how will I go about monitoring this process. You see, like I told you, there is a department that is solely responsible, responsible for that, yes. and we have our own ways and means of doing it. Okay. There are some, you know, internal mechanisms that I would like to discuss outside here. Uh, I can't make them public, public. but okay. we know what we are doing, and uh, I want to believe that we we'll monitor them properly. All right. Yeah. 
All right. What happened in a process where a candidate uh, spend above that, or an individual or corporate organization donate more than that 10 million naira? There are provisions in the Electoral Act. There are punishments that have been written that are inherent. Okay. But uh, the new amended Electoral Act has not been released yet, and I don't really know the exact punishment. I don't even know whether it's been part of the, uh, amendment. the amendment. But definitely there are penalties okay. for individuals and for corporate organizations that, you know, break such rules. Okay. Yeah. Well, like, like you said, you've not seen, we've not seen the law. But who will be responsible? I'm sure definitely is INEC responsible for carrying out, meting out that punishment to those who have. No, hurt. no, no, no. INEC doesn't carry out meting of punishments. Mm. That is the beauty of democracy. There are three segments of, uh, in a democratic society, especially mm. the kind we practice the executive, the judiciary, and of course the legislature. Yeah. Once the law is broken and it is ascertained, it is established that the law has been broken, then we we'll push it over to the law enforcement agency. We, we establish the fact of the breaking of the of law? Of course, the commission. Okay. The commission does INEC. that, yeah. INEC in this process. Yeah, but it has to be made clear that uh, when we talk about the law, it doesn't only rest on the commission. It is a civic responsibility. There are certain things we are not omnipotent nor are we omniscient. That is why we always appeal to the members of the public that whenever there is any perpetration of illegality in any aspect by any person, then we'll appreciate it if we can be availed of such information With so that it hastens our work. With facts and figures. With facts and figures, so of course. That's why I said it is ascertained. Okay. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, uh, let's leave that uh, electoral bill out, though we hope uh, Mr. President will ascend to read. We do indeed. Um, but but let's, let's, again, before we leave the electoral bill, we're already in November. Elections are expected to be uh, by February. Yeah, February. By February. Exactly. Is exactly. it not coming late, this electoral bill, considering the fact Mr. President has, has not ascended to read? You see, it is, but as it is, mm -hmm. we, have not already, we have not really exhausted the timeline. The, time. the, the time okay. We still have a little bit more time. Okay. And I want to believe that, you see, I want Nigerians to be reassured, like my chairman said. Mm -hmm. We are talking about Nigeria, for goodness sake. Yes. Nigeria is Nigeria. We are not Niger, we are not Mauritania or the Gambia. We ensure that people... I mean, people have to know that the right things have to, be, have done. to be done. I have no doubt in my mind that ultimately the right things are going to be done. To be done. The electoral act will be passed. Mm -hmm. We are going to have our money. We are going to do the right thing, and elections will be conducted. Yeah, you know, we're asking this question because of the front and back we've seen between the uh, the executive and the national assembly. I mean, what is the gap between the day of election and the electoral bill being ready? Is I there cannot specific... really precisely tell you, but there okay. is, there is, but I cannot quote the exact date as okay. I know. But I do know for sure We've that we have not ex uh, exhausted the timeline yet. Time, we are still within the time frame. The, within the time frame. Exactly. All right. Uh, let, let, let's hope <coughs> that the, the needful will be done uh, before then. But then people will always ask, because I've seen civil society organizations, election monitors, and whatever you things like that, most of the issues now are the front burner is the issue of the primaries of the political parties. Yeah. I mean, we even see governors and party chairmen exchanging a lot of words and whatever it is like that. Mm -hmm. We've seen INEC say, look, Zamfara, we are not going to allow you. And what so many issues are coming. But this morning, we're just reading that party is saying their list uh, is, ready. Is, is ready. Now, isn't that a dicey situation where INEC is saying primaries did not happen in this place? But the party is saying, no, we actually had uh, primaries on what of you. Hmm. What are we going to make of that situation at the end of the day? You see, it's dicey and it's not dicey, really. Okay. The commission has already made its stand. I wouldn't like to delve deeply into it because the issue is already, in, already court, in court. Yeah. And I wouldn't like so to say anything nice. that might preempt the outcome. Yeah. But the reality of the situation is that mm. there were no primaries in Zambora State. We have a department, like I told you earlier, EPM, that monitors all activities, including primaries. And we did send the necessary people to go and monitor, monitor. what was happening in Zamfara. Yeah. They were there all through the dates that were given to us who were there. Mm -hmm. The primaries were not conducted. They shifted the date within this time span, of course, before the expiry of the time, oh, which was 7th of October. Okay. We were there. And up till and including the 7th, up to midnight of 7th of October, there were no primaries. And so the commission came out with a statement that there were no primaries and we do not expect Zampara to present anybody mm -hmm. to contest for all those uh, all, uh, elections for National Assembly 
down to the state assembly elections, including the governorship election. And that is still the stand yes, of the commission. But well, doesn't that contradict the law that says uh, the national chairman of the party uh, is, the, is, the, is, the, is, the, is the last person to submit a name to the political party? There is Please. no contradiction. I mean, you have to look at the basis first before you look yeah. at the top. Okay. And the basis here is that primaries must be conducted. conducted. So after the conduct of the election, yeah. then, then that is where whoever is going to present the forms come yes. in. But then elections were not conducted. Okay. That is the bottom line. Okay. So, so there must be primary election to even start talking about substitution who submits, of names. Uh, substitution of names, exactly. Okay. exactly. Okay. The law allows that. If there is a primary uh, uh, election. election conducted and then the party feels that they need to change, then fine and good. It is within the, the, the ambit of the law. So that can be done. But in a situation like that of Zampara, yeah. where we know and we've established that primary elections were not conducted, I mean, how can you come, how can you begin to talk about uh, pre presenting a list, chocolates of uh, uh, substituting names? All right. Well, a lot of issues there. Zampara is just one of the states. There are other states too with the same. I remember Okorocha is having a running battle with even the national chairman. It started with Ahmed Gulak, who was sent by the party to go and conduct the primaries. Then now it's more between Oshomoli and uh, uh, Oshomoli and Okorocha. There is more also between Oshomoli and uh, Amosun, the governor of Ogun State. A lot of uh, issues there. All right, let's leave that. How people would always ask, how prepared is INEC when we are talking about election? We've seen a series of election, gubernatorial especially, happen, and people always always say at the stage and say, okay, this will be. Uh, a litmus test for us to see what INEC can do in 2019. We've had series of these elections. How prepared can we say INEC is as far as 2019 is concerned? Okay, I think we have to look at the background of what you just said. We've had series of uh, elections, elections, including yeah. gubernatorial elections senatorial, and uh, senatorial state assembly, house of reps, by elections, and so on. Almost 350 or thereabouts. Okay. And each one was considered a, a litmus test. Yeah. So I don't know whether we've passed or not, but I do know for sure that of the 350, mm -hmm. only three or four had gone to court, okay. which means almost 95, 96, 97 percent we've passed. So as far as those elections, if you use them as litmus tests, then I think we've passed. And as far as our preparations are concerned, we are prepared. Okay. The only issue, like you said earlier in the introduction to the to this program, is that uh, we have one or two issues with the electoral act and, of course, our budget. But those have not stopped us; they have not prevented us from getting prepared, from doing what is necessary. For instance, just last night or a couple of nights ago, we received some material, non-sensitive, and all it's all part of the uh, of the process of the 2019 general election. Mm -hmm. In terms of uh, logistics, I mean, in terms of uh, personnel, we've been in touch with the necessary organizations like NYSC, like federal establishments, like universities, and so on and so forth. We've always been in contact with them, all in line toward preparing for the election. Mm -hmm. So as far as we are concerned, we have no problem whatsoever. We are getting set, and we shall be there. Yeah. All right. Another issue that bothers Nigeria is the issue of the large number of political parties, 91 political parties. Yep. And uh, so far, we've had so many of them, I mean, coming out with presidential uh, uh, candidates. Uh, we're going to have this large number of uh, presidential candidates. Yeah. And Nigeria will say, we don't know the kind of ballot papers <laughs> we are going to have at the end of the day. Yeah. Because we saw what happened in uh, the last election held in the Kichi, exactly. where you have almost how many gubernatorial uh, uh, candidates. Exactly. Some of them even. Uh, just this morning we were talking that if you ask some Nigerians <coughs> to, to name 10 political parties, <laughs> it will be difficult for them to actually name. How are we going to resolve this issue of uh, ballot papers with large number of uh, uh, candidates? Exactly. You see, I, I, I want to assure the public that uh, whatever it takes, yeah. we are going to do the right thing. Okay. But I want to believe that before the elections, most of these political parties will fizzle out. Okay. Check, for instance, the, no, those that have su submitted names of presidential aspirants, right. I think just about 80 or thereabouts. Okay. So this is just the beginning. They have begun to fizzle out. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, there will be mergers, they will be, you know, they'll come together and then they'll form a kind of alliance and some of them will begin to fizzle out. But even if all 91 political parties do come to contest, I mean, in India, there was an election, about 250 presidential contestants came up and a ballot paper was made for all the contestants. Mm -hmm. So we can do that. All that is required is 
I want to believe that it's an issue that probably you are going to touch mm -hmm. uh, uh, voter, education. voter education. We yes. are going to do that with you know, started, but I don't like to preempt your question. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is that we are going to do the needful. We are going to ensure that even if all Nigerian political parties are going to contest, there will be a ballot paper that's going to accommodate everybody. everybody. Well, even though we know at the end of the day, it might not be possible to have 91 uh, presidential candidate uh -huh. or gubernatorial uh, uh, candidates at, at, at the end of the day. But then, of course, the issue of voter education is one uh, important, uh, very vital issue because a lot of people will raise this issue. Like I was saying, of course, we are hoping to have National Orientation Agency here and next week so that there will. It seems to be, it seems INEC is the only one doing this voter education. I mean, don't political parties also have the responsibility of voter education? Of course they do. That is why there is what is called IPAC. Okay. Uh, Interagency political mm -hmm. party something something yeah, or advisory other. council exactly party, exactly advisory, advisory council. council we are always in contact with them and I want to believe that pretty soon we are going to have a meeting with them okay. and of course we bring all these issues to them and they also are expected to play their own part and they do try indeed they do like you said Noah has been partnering us other non-governmental organizations yes, and so on they have all been partners in progress and we have been trying our best but then like you said there is so much that one can do. So far, it's been INEC, INEC, INEC. And I want to believe that the other organizations too will come into the fray, especially more so now that the elections are fast approaching. Inshallah, I want to believe that the needful will be done. All right. We hope the needful will be done. But before then, the issue, and, I, and this is very important, because anytime things go wrong, uh, people blame INEC. Anytime things go wrong, people blame INEC. Even where some of the things that go wrong, are responsibility of security agents. Now, with 2019 around the corner, with of course a lot of challenges here and there, are uh, we going to see a situation where the security, uh, INEC will ensure that uh, certain measures are put in place to ensure that even the security have little to do to have a very uh, uh, transparent, credible 2019 election? Yes. You see, if you look at it, if you look at the history of budgeting mm. for election yeah. in Nigeria, it has not been, never been this good for the security agencies. Okay. A lot of money has been budgeted for them. The issue all along has been that they have not been fully or properly funded. Okay. But this time around, things are going to be different. And I want to also believe that we are going to play our part. The honors now lies in the pol on the politicians and members of the public. Okay. If everyone plays their role according to the game, mm -hmm. according to the rules of the game, then I don't think we are going to have any, any problem so that nobody is going to be blamed. Okay. Issue of politics, I mean, politics is not a one-man show. It is something that encompasses and entails all facets. Com the commission, security agencies, politicians, and so on and so forth. Everybody will have to join us to ensure that the right thing is done. If we do that, then the blame game may not even, have, uh, may not even arise. All right. Let's hope that the right thing will be done by the stakeholders or by those concerned and the necessary public. Well, when we come back, I'm sure, I'm sure there's one issue people want to hear, the issue of uh, boot, I mean, voter's card, permanent voter's card. That is one issue that causes that a lot of Nigerians. Because they <coughs> that way. But before then, let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll go to that issue. Please remain with us. The Europa League is now live and exclusive in HD on Star Times. Watch Arsenal. Chelsea AC Milan Sevilla Olympic Marseille and other top clubs in Europe battle for glory in the Europa League Enjoy all these and over 75 exciting channels for just 1,900 Naira on the Star Times Classic Bouquet. Don't cry, don't cry. Star Times. Enjoy digital life. I'm touching my gimme to Raru Yasaki Sabuzi. I'm Makuma and Enumi. That is the English ship as a chenzaba. The Magi. Go watch a match to Raru Wachi.
Thank you for being there. The program is Dialogue, reaching you from these tables of Liberty Television, Voice for All and Vision for All. And this morning, we are looking at how prepared INEC is, the issue of expenses, the electoral bill, among several issues concerning 2019 general elections. And of course, one issue that is very, very dear to Nigerians is the issue of permanent voters' card. People just feel, I mean, the political awareness seems to be, to be on the increase as far as Nigerians are concerned. And they feel the only thing we can do, we can decide patients for four years, do whatever you want to do. We can re-vote you or vote you out. And this morning we have the Administrative Secretary of Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC Keduna Office, talking about our Mohammed Mashi. Well, we talk about those things. The issue of voters card, and I'm sure this is one issue. I remember it's just like during the curfew. Some people say it's lifting. <laughs> Nigerians were also interested to hear the coffee has been relaxed or so. Okay, do not think. <coughs> so anytime you mention INEC, what people want to hear is issues card. surrounding voters' card. Well, we have new people who registered. The last time you were here, you actually assured that uh, definitely a lot of people, actually it was the uh, Resident Electoral Commission actually yeah. himself, yeah. who assured that uh, everybody who registered will get their permanent voters' card. Exactly. Are we still standing on that. Yes, we still stand on that. Okay. As it is now, there is what we call the, the purging, the, the clean-up of the voters' register. Okay. And that is the next in the line of our activities. Okay. Currently, we, are, we have the uh, registers for all the local governments in Nigeria okay. that are being produced at the, state, at the states. Okay. Look at Kaduna, for instance, where I am. We have registered about almost half of the registers for the state okay. because the clean-up is starting on the 6th of November, November. Okay. that is in just a few days time from now and we are prepared for that. We have trained all the necessary personnel that are going to do it. Now, essentially, everybody is expected, who has registered, is expected to, do, to go to the PU, okay. where his Poly, or her name is, units. the polling units, where, where, where they, they registered or where their names are supposed to be because the registration exercise especially toward the tail end of the last uh, registration exercise was conducted at local government levels and so it is expected that uh, the registers will be produced and they will be pasted at every PU. All 119,973 PU that we have in Nigeria, all 5,102 that we have in Kaduna State will have their registers pasted at the PU level. And people are expected to go and look at those registers to ensure that their names are written and written properly. All their details are captured properly. And uh, if there is any need for them to complain about you know, misinformation or misapplication of their data, then they're expected to complain and then we'll take it up and make sure that the right thing is done. And all this is, you know, it, toward preparing the printing of the permanent mm -hmm. voters' cards. Yes, and I want to assure the public that pretty soon that is exactly what is going to happen. Okay. Like my commissioner said, like you rightly pointed out, we can guarantee every Nigerian that registered they are going to have their permanent voters' cards and they are going to vote for whoever they want to vote for in the 2019 okay. general election. Okay. The issue of um, uh, card reader is another issue. We saw in 2015 when that innovation came up uh, that the president is, is fond of saying that uh, probably if, on, if not for the uh, card, card reader, card reader. Uh, lots of uh, people in office today wouldn't have been in the office. Uh, it was a way that checkmate a lot of election uh, rigging, yes. Uh, are we going to see more and new innovations that will checkmate uh, election rigging? The issue of ballot snatch snatching is that. Uh, the issue of people coming to polling unit to disrupt election as a whole uh, is that. So, should in, in a situation where somebody come disrupt uh, a polling unit, uh, what measures are we going to put in place to ensure that those who have already registered their uh, votes who have already voted, have already voted their votes, their votes will not be in vain. Exactly. You see, the issue of uh, just wait for the Electoral Act, Act to come out, okay, and you will see that everything that should be done is already in place. Okay. It's not only the smart card reader. Now we have backing, legal backing for the use of the smart card reader, okay. and also for use of any kind of electronic device for transmission of, of results. results. And as it is, that is exactly what is going to happen. The smart card reader like everybody knows, it's a, it's, it's a device that captures and counts all votes that have been conducted, that have, been, that have taken place Absolutely. in that particular polling unit. At the end of the day, we are going to fill whatever should be filled at the PU level, and then we are going to paste it for everybody to see. So that ultimately, even if you snatch the box, 
it will it will not count okay. because you may okay agreed the ballot papers you might go and you know to print them stuff them into the box but we already have the information okay. in the smart card reader okay. and the information has already reached the the collection center okay. even before you leave okay. because it will be transmitting simultaneously as people are, are, are voting okay. the information is reaching so even if anybody tries to snatch the ballot okay. box and stop them it will be to no avail that are much much more I would like to preempt it, but when the electoral act comes out, we okay. are going to see what we've done. Okay. I, I asked this question because we saw what happened in 2015. Of course, like everything in Nigeria, and I remember when the Mohammed Owais committee was set up, a lot of uh, uh, hearsay and hellings, I mean, met that commission. Uh, people who said they would not do the right thing, but by the time they finished their work and submitted, up to today, a lot of people who actually uh, dismiss uh, that committee in the first place are asking that the recommendations should, will, should be implemented. The same thing, we saw when Pref Professor Jega came on board, a lot of people called for his head and what have you, things like that. And today he's but saying by the time 2015 election is conducted and J Professor Jega out of office, we saw people saying we need more of Jega's in places like INEC. No exception with the current chairman, Professor Yaku. We see the people moving from Tambaga. Just last week, a court vacated the uh, the the what is it called <coughs> for his arrest <laughs> that, that 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 we saw now and with professor yakubo we we're thinking coming with a security background and what have you we will see more innovations that will build on what uh Tyru Jega left are we going to see those more innovations indeed we are as a matter of fact we are seeing them okay. so much has been happening if you've been following the by elections we've been conducting mm -hmm. a lot of innovations that is why there is minimum litigation, litigation. like i pointed out earlier we've had over 350 elections between 2015 and now mm -hmm. and of those elections less than two percent have gone to court okay. and only one only one has had any inkling of you know negative exactly. happenings so we are good and it was Tell the one that went to court not because of our index, exactly uh, it was not the responsibility of INEC. we were not the one that issues. were exactly okay. it was party issues not INEC. so we are prepared we are doing everything we are doing to ensure that the right thing is done okay. for instance during the last election last two governorship elections ocean and the AKT, AKT. one of the innovations we made was that all the vehicles, all our vehicles that were conveying material to the to the various local governments, mm -hmm. were being monitored. Tracking devices. Everything was being tracked. Mm -hmm. If a vehicle stops in the bush for two minutes, they were going to ask the driver, what, what? Uh, why are you stopping our time doing? Mm -hmm. So all this are much, much more are innovations made by the commission. Mm -hmm. And indeed, I can assure that before 2019, there will be more of those innovations. innovations. OK. I mean, talking about AKT and uh, Oshun, we had a situation, I think, I can't remember if it's like AKT or Oshun, no, I think it was AKT, mm. where we have different colors of ballot papers yeah. for different local governments. Exactly. <laughs> so even somebody is going to take from Irili to AKT, exactly. uh, what have you. We call that color coding. Color coding. Exactly. Are we going to see this color coding? Indeed, we elections? expect that as well. We expect that as well. It will okay. be done everywhere. It will be universally uh, uh, implemented. Okay. We are going to see that. It's part of the innovations. The innovations. Yeah. I'm sure that is not going to be in public. Maybe until the election. Of course, day. yes. So that Keduna will not know what color Aha, Katina is going to use. Exactly. And, and or vice, Niger. And vice versa. Exactly. All right. No, we know Niger is unique. It was <laughs> 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 and all, all right. Uh, uh, another issue is okay, we know when it, when issues like this surrounding elections come. Like I said, when things go wrong, people blame INEC. But of course, when it goes right too, INEC takes uh, its own uh, uh, share, uh, share of, of, of the credibility issues. One issue is election monitors, mm. because we've had situations where elections held in some places that were so transparent, but then you have an elector monitor comes out to say something that did not actually happen, or probably the election monitor did not work hands in glue with INEC. What does INEC do to ensure that, look, wherever you're going to have election monitors, you have them work with INEC officials for them to see and the writing is not just done, but is seen to be done. Exactly. You see, that has always been the case. We are human beings. And one of the beauties of democracy is that people have freedom of speech. There are times when you put in the best that you can, but to somebody, it's not good enough. Okay. So they can say anything they wish to say. But then, like you said, the commission, you see, hitherto, it used to be almost a free ride. But now, even those that are applying, to the monitors, we have to screen them to ensure that they are the right caliber of people, the right caliber of organizations that should be registered. Somebody just came to me yesterday that uh, he has applied 
to be a monitor. He has an organization that want to be part of the monitoring uh, activities during the 20 election. And they told him that they have to go through a lot of rigors before they could give, give him clearance. So that is exactly what is going on now. And I believe ultimately, only the right caliber of monitoring uh, organizations Organization. will be registered by the commission. Well, talking about right caliber of uh, monitoring organizations, because I I've seen situations where somebody sit down and said their organization monitors this, and certain blames were thrown at INEC. And by the time some of us journalists sit down, we realize that, look, the blame is not even that of INEC. The blame may have been that of the police and other people. Is INEC doing something to ensure that anybody who is going to monitor the process get to know the laws, get to know what is the responsibility of INEC, what is not responsibility of INEC, what is the responsibility of, uh, um, I mean, religious organization, political organization, and the security at the end of the day. So that by the time, for instance, the security does something wrong, the monitors will not shift the blame to blame. Exactly. You have, oh, you have answered the question yourself. Mm -hmm. There is need for everybody to be conscious of their responsibilities. Okay. But then, like I said, you can't go into people's brain mm -hmm. to tell them you must do this. Oh, Some of them are being mischievous. Don't you think that there is need? For INEC to actually sensitize even those monitors before the election. Exactly. To let them know this is the responsibility of INEC. Definitely. And this is not the responsibility of INEC. You see, like you just said, mm. things have been happening previously. And whatever we do, we build on what happened previously. Mm. If there have been shortcomings either on our part, or on the part of security or the civil society organizations, mm. the commission will build upon that to ensure that next time things are being done properly. Mm. Like I just told you, somebody just came to me and they told him that there are certain things that they have to look at. Okay. And ultimately, before elections, before every election, the commission sits and have a tete a tete with all these uh, uh, prospective monitors, Monitoring and then the do's and don'ts are pointed out to them. Okay. As a matter of fact, we have a lot of publications that we give to them that these are what are expected of you, and these are what are not, what are not uh, expected of you. So ultimately, I, I want to believe that uh, the commission will do the right thing by telling them that you are to blame the commission only when the commission should be blamed. Yeah, but that is, you know, an individual thing. Some, no matter how much you tell them, because they hate the commission, mm -hmm. or for whatever reason, yes, they'll yes. just come out and blame the commission. Okay, we never do things right. Should, the INEC be, should, INEC the, should INEC have the final say on who should be an election monitor? Of course we do. We have the final say on who should be. Why should INEC have, have the final say? <laughs> because it is our baby. Elections are our baby. I mean, we conduct the election. Therefore, whoever comes and wants to monitor what we are doing, we have to open the door for you before you come in. Okay. So we have the final say for sure. All right. Yeah. All right. So in a situation where somebody comes crying out, crying foul, that INEC refused to accredit me to monitor the elections, what do we make of that situation? You go to INEC and ask the commission why he was not registered. Okay. We must have a reason, a very cogent reason at that. What could be some of the reasons why INEC would deny a monitor? Now, I wouldn't like to delve into that because it's a little bit political. But if you look at what obtained in 2015, mm -hmm. there were some so-called NGOs okay. that were in actual fact fronts for some political, political parties. parties. Okay. So if such organizations do come up and we have evidence, solid evidence, to ascertain that they are really not what they are claiming to be, mm -hmm. then we won't open the door for them. Should all election monitors be neutral in, in, in political context? Naturally, they should be, because they are here to monitor. And by monitoring, it, it's a process that, at the end of the day, the commission, if they submit their reports, then we should see where we are right and see where we are wrong. But in a situation where they are, where they are not neutral, then they are not serving any good to the commission, nor are they serving any good to the general society. So they should be neutral. All right. Yeah. Well, those are some of the issues there, and this is hoping that when you come out to say you're an elect, uh, elect, elect, uh, election monitor, uh, you are actually out to monitor, not to serve interests of one political party against uh, the other. After all said and done, this morning we're talking about the politicians moving from one political party to the other, so uh, it might not be about that. Well, let's take uh, another quick break. When we come back, we give you the numbers for you to call in and contribute or ask questions. Please don't go away. I'm touching my gimme to Raru ya saki sabu zibi. I'm makuma dan enumi dead ida ingan shipasu chen zaba. The magi ko wache machi to raru wachi.
loving the, the program is Dialogue, reaching you from the stables of Liberty Television. And this morning, we are looking at issues surrounding uh, 2019 general election as it affects INEC among several others. And at this point, we shall be opening the lines for you to be part of the program. All right, the numbers are already displayed there on your TV screen. But for the sake of those who might be listening to us and not watching us, especially via the internet, the numbers to call to be part of the program are 0803-095-6375. I take that again slowly, 0803-095-6375. And the second number is 0806-891-8315. Again, 0806-891-8315. We have a first caller. Hello, good morning. Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning, Abila. This is the SMB calling from Kano. SMB, thank you for joining us. Go ahead. Uh, thank you very much, sir. I have a question and then maybe some suggestions. Uh, sir, mm. uh, you see, by virtue of our political experience and understanding, mm. I think uh, it's, a, it's a very good idea. This workers' education unit, this INIC, will structure uh, workers' education unit as a permanent unit, even if after election, uh, the workers' education unit will continue with us and with these activity, activities. Okay. Because, uh, like you may mention, that the election is your duty. They should all agree with that. Why, why is it that we don't see workers' education on the when the election is around the corner? That is a big problem. Look at what's happening in the primary. Uh, sometimes what we say uh, the, the big center in our political system is uh, delegation. That is the delegate matter. Mm -hmm. Now come up with a uh, direct agenda rest issue. And then look at what is going on with the political party. And then uh, you have all the right to monitor the activities of the, uh, of the political party. I think, I think that voter education unit should be permanently structured so that even after election, the work will continue as a continuous process. All right. Uh, all right, what we are witnessing today, the voter education will not be on the, will not be on the, on the red election is around the corner. I think it's a big problem. I, I, don't, I don't know how you're going to look at this. All right, I listen. think it will help the society. All right, listen. Uh, we are with education and so on and so forth. Thank all you very much, everybody. It's going to be All right, thank you very much, uh, SMB. There from Kanye. Well, <coughs> the question is, should it? Okay, let's take this caller. Okay. Hello, good morning. We lost that caller. Okay, another caller on the line. Let's go with this. Hello, good morning. Hello. Yes, good morning. Hello. Hello, we can hear you loud and clear. Okay, we lost that caller. Another one here. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Welcome to the program. Yes, I'm calling you from Adamawa. Mr. Uh, okay, Musa Bazam, go ahead from Adamawa. Uh, please, I want to make my own contribution regarding to the, uh, uh, electoral review. Go ahead, Musa. Uh, using, after the electoral, uh, using the, uh, card figure. Yes. You know, what I find is if the card figure becomes official, I don't know how our people in the villages can be able to use this card figure. That is one. Okay. And, uh, if you look at what is happening, what has happened in the previous election, it was like if it, the candidate cannot work, uh, they can decide to use the list to check. Now, in the villages where people cannot have access to electricity, it is uh, mostly where people live in the northern part of Nigeria. Mm. How do you get to go to the candidate or check? All right, there are many situations that you go around where people do not even know of the candidate and how to work with the candidate to be used. So I think the electoral bill is to make more emphasis on the another thing than that. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Musa Bazanda from Adamawa State. What? Well, let's go to SMB. Okay. I mean, shouldn't voter education be an all year round thing? I Why quite, should I like, wait till election time? I quite agree with you. But then we have to realize that we are in Nigeria. And uh if you look at the economic situation in Nigeria, I think it's something that we may not necessarily be in a position to. And uh, as it funding. is, if you look at it psychologically, mm. psychologically, people only tend to look at politics when it is close to election time. Okay. So whenever, if you insist on doing it all year round, 
then sometimes you might just be wasting your time because people might not be attentive to look at it. And I also want to believe that answers the second question for Musa from Adama. Musa, Voter education is something that should be more you know, prominent during or very close to election, election period. Okay. And uh, uh, also, SMB talked about uh, a directorate. I mean, uh, there, yeah. there, there should be something, a unit permanently. Yeah, we do have. There is a, uh, a directorate for voter education, and we have a director on voter education and one or two other things that are, you know, related to voter education. So it's not something new. All right. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Uh oh, we lost that color there. Okay, uh, somebody, I, I, I think SMB or one of the colors also touched on the issue. Okay, smart I think it's Musa Bazam. No, yeah, Musa Bazam, okay, Musa Bazam touched uh, the issue of a smart card reader. Yeah. Uh, does it have to do with the issue of having electricity in the rural areas? No, 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 it doesn't. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. I mean, this card, let me give you an example of what is happening now. It's yeah. all part of the preparation process. We have about 7,000, 8,000 smart card readers. So okay. far in Kaduna, okay. and I don't think we need any more because there'll be enough for us to do the, to conduct our election. Okay. We have charged almost all of them, and in the process of charging, we found that some of them have defects, okay. and we've removed them okay. and we've sent them for other repairs or for for replacement. Okay. After we did that for about three months, mm -hmm. we went again to look at them, Check and them. almost 95 of them have returned the charges 90 percent. Okay. So if we do charge them a day or two before election, yeah. we we'll find. Uh, hello, hello, good morning. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. We come back on this uh, election period of uh, uh, 2019. You didn't tell us your name or where you're calling from? My name is Abdul Fatai from uh, Abuja. Okay, Abdul Fatai, go ahead. Yes. So, my my intention is on INEC. INEC, they are doing well. Okay. Thank you. All right, Fatah. Abdul Fatah, go ahead. So, the INEC they are doing well under the Muhammad Buhari administration. Okay. Because we are, we saw what uh, during 2017. Mm. Right? So, in 2017 and uh, 15, we know what they are doing mm. under the Yaga administration. Okay. Good luck, Jonathan. Mm. So, frustration up and down. I'm on now by people in uh, INEC, INEC now in, the, in democracy. So we are thanking Muhammad Gwari and we are thanking the Yakub Mahmoud administration. He's doing well. Thank you. So we like him and he should continue work in work. God will be with him, inshallah. All right, amen. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate your appreciation. Uh, from Abu Jada. Well, um, I think I'll uh, put uh, an end to those calls uh, there. Let's see. Well, it will maybe one or two more calls. But then you've had it there. Uh, they said uh, a prophet is not respected at home. <laughs> uh, but for INEC, this, uh, I'm sure those criticisms have always been there. They are here and they will always be there. But what will be your message to Nigerians, especially concerning INEC as we approach 2019? You see, first let me talk about the permanent voters' cards. Okay. People still have to come out and collect their voters' cards. All right. You cannot vote anybody without the permanent voters' card. And they shouldn't you cannot wait vote out to... anybody, and you shouldn't wait. Okay. I mean, for goodness so sake, the have, uh, cards uh, are there for to be received. Okay. Pretty soon, hopefully, like for instance, during this uh, clean-up that uh, we are going to conduct now, we are taking the permanent voters' cards to the grassroots level, okay. at least to the RA level, where people can access them easier than at the local government level, mm -hmm. where currently uh, that is what takes place currently. Okay. So I'd like to appeal to the electorate to please go and collect their permanent voters' cards. All right. so, mon so many of them are still lying fallow. People have not come to collect them. All right. Well, let's leave it at that. Uh, in the days ahead, like I always promise, we shall always do the best to bring those concerns here to answer some of those uh, critical questions. So uh, not to be related, definitely we are going to do that. But again, I think we have to appreciate INEC because anytime we call on them, uh, they run here to answer some of the uh, critical questions. What friendly friendly fire we call them, uh, it doesn't kill. <laughs> and this morning we have with us the Administrative Secretary of INEC and UNA Office, Awal Mohammed Maishi. Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome, thank All you right. so much. There you are. That is the side of the program for this morning. Since 6 o'clock, we've been together with you, with uh, Aisha Muhammad Ahmed. Well, it is the last edition of 
of the program for the week. Uh, tomorrow, sure, uh, it will be Liberty Weekend with Kabiru Turaki. And on Sunday, it will be, of course, the Kalungu uh, crew will be here talking about uh, another Adiza and the Abu Bakr Vladima. Thank you for investing your time with us this morning. Please, whatever you do, think Nigeria, sleep Nigeria, walk Nigeria, but above all, pray Nigeria. Abdul Aziz Ahmed Karu saying good morning.